Hello and welcome. This is a quite a complicated problem involving a nozzle, converging diverging nozzle, and we are asked to find several things. Uh, primarily, back pressure that uh, that produces a particular flow structure, isentropic flow, or a, or a shock standing at the back of the at the exit plane, or a shock standing somewhere in, in the diverging channel. Let's go step by step to simplify the problem. First of all, uh, let's solve the first problem, which is a we have an isentropic flow. The nozzle is supplied from air in a reservoir. So the reservoir condition is nothing but state zero, which is same in all these three pictures. So let's concentrate on the first schematic. So we want to find the ideal back pressure for isentropic expansion. So if there's an isentropic expansion, we know that the uh, total temperature and pressure will remain constant, A star will remain constant. Uh, but what are the condition given? Ideal nozzle is designed for an exit Mach number of two. So our condition is Mach number is two at the exit, which we'll call state one. So all you have to do is to find state zero and one, and we are done with the first part of the problem. So let's do that. So state zero, as I've already said, is designated as the reservoir state or the total state, and the pressure is given to us for MPA, temperature is given, and of course velocity and high uh, elevation should be zero. That should produce the total temperature. We must be the same as, uh, sorry, as must be the same as the temperature, static temperature, and the pressure should be same as the total pressure. For state one, The Mach number is given, so Mach is given the consequence of energy equation, and here is the consequence of isentropic flow. Um, and that, and we also assume an arbitrary exit area because area is not supplied, but in this problem, the, the flow structure doesn't depend on the exit area. The mass flow rate will, but that's not one of the questions. Then the area somewhere along the nozzle should, should have been supplied. So we assume an exit area of one meter square to make the problem simpler. So as we can see, we already found the back pressure necessary. This is one of our answers. So if the back pressure is 511 kPa, we'll have an isentropic flow. So that will be the design pressure at the exit. Okay, let's go back to second part of the problem. It says that what is the maximum back pressure to choke the nozzle? In other words, uh, now suppose uh, the pressure, back pressure is increasing. Just suppose, for the sake of argument, the back pressure is same as the chamber pressure, 4 MPa. Obviously, in that case, there will be absolutely no, uh, the pressure is equal, there will be no flow at all, there will be no velocity. So if you raise the pressure, what is the maximum pressure so that we still reach a critical state here? So here the speed of sound is reached, but on the diverging section, the flow is not supersonic, it becomes turned subsonic. What is that magic pressure? which will follow us, make us follow this particular line. In other words, this entire diverging section works as a diffuser here. Okay, uh, that's not a hard problem to solve because first of all, we recognize that, uh, you know, at the, at the, we call state two, the exit state, when there's a subsonic flow all through the diverging section but the total temperature remained constant. Again, it's isentropic flow. Total pressure remained constant, isentropic flow. A star remains constant because at state one, we have already found out what is a star, so that doesn't change. And notice that it picked up the, uh, the, the Mach number, the subsonic Mach number. Actually, there could be two different solutions here because area is known and area is given, A2 equals A1, uh, is the same exit. So therefore, the area ratio can produce two different answers. If you go to uh, the Mach, if you go put your pointer over the Mach number, you will find that a second solution is shown. Mach number equals two, which we know. State one was our second solution. Two isentropic solution for the same uh, the converging diverging nozzle. One is the subsonic solution, one is the supersonic solution. Of course, the subsonic solution will produce a hugely higher pressure, 3635. So if you go back to the PowerPoint, we found what is this pressure and what is that pressure. Now, the last part uh, of the question is the ra range of back pressure over which a normal shock stands in the diverging section. 
So we will go to the extreme. We'll say, okay, what is it? What is the what is the pressure for which P equals P3 for which a normal shock stand at the exit itself? We already know at P equals P2 it's an isentropic flow. So if we found P equals P2, and if you can find P equals P3, then obviously any pressure in between, there will be a normal shock to satisfy the pressure boundary condition in the diverging section. I mean the shock in the diverging section to satisfy the back pressure boundary condition. So to find P equals P3, uh, I mean the state 3, what we'll do, we'll, for that, an isentropic flow will ex exist up to that point. So state 2, which you already calculated, uh, or, or rather state 1, is the uh, supersonic solution just before uh, the, the normal shock happens. So from state 1, if we know the Mach number is 2, to find state 3, we can go back to the gas dynamics table and and there if we and over there if we enter a Mach number of 2 I've already done that so notice that if, if you enter a Mach number of 2 the table calculates all the you can go to a standard table to pick those numbers but here the tables are already compressed so it gives you the Mach number after the shock. It, it gives you the all kinds of ratios. Let's say we pick up the pressure ratio. So pressure will be 4.5 times. The Mach number is 0.577. So if we use those numbers, any two numbers will suffice. We can pick as many. So if you go to state three, that's what I have done. This is the state where the normal shock, after the right after the normal shock. Notice that state three and state one are infinitesimally closer because uh, because the sh normal shock is assumed to be really, really thin. That's why A3 is same as A1. And of course, the total temperature remains the same, but we cannot say total temperature remains the same. Uh, total pressure remains the same because it's not isentropic. Normal shock is not isentropic. So with this condition, the pressure is given, uh, pressure has been found. Uh, temperature, uh, this is found from actually the table, normal shock table total temperature remains constant and, and A3 remains the same as A1. These are sufficient conditions to find the state completely. Uh, once you find that state, uh, you know that the pressure is found is 4.5 times P1, which is 2300. So between 2300 and 3635, we have created a condition for a normal shock to stand somewhere uh, in the diverging section. So we found P2 as well as P3, so the problem has been solved.